People in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo want the UN to leave. They say the mission has failed to keep them safe. Several civilians and peacekeepers have been killed in days of unrest. So, if UN troops can't keep the peace, who can? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Imran Khan. People in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo say they've had enough of UN peacekeepers. At least 12 civilians and three members of the local UN mission known as Monusco have been killed in days of protest. Dozens have been wounded. <laughs> Demonstrators attacked UN bases in at least four cities in the provinces of North and South Kivu. They say UN troops have failed to protect them from armed groups, including M23. Some protesters say peacekeepers opened fire on them. The UN denies this and has accused protesters of snatching weapons from Congolese police. And the UN's children agency says kids have been manipulated into joining the unrest. Congo is our heritage. Congo is for the Congolese. Ever since UNESCO came here, they have done nothing, nothing. People have their throats slit every day. And while we are meant to have a UN mission to keep people safe, the population is being massacred. They are being killed like sheep in the presence of that UNESCO there. When they go home, we're going to take care of things ourselves. They say they don't have the means to combat the M23 rebels, so we are going to defend ourselves on our own. If they don't leave today, we are going to keep demonstrating until they do. The UN says attacks on its peacekeepers may constitute a war crime. Its chief of peacekeeping is due to arrive in the country on Friday. The situation today can be described as uh, uh, frag uh, uh, normal fragility, if you wish, uh, because uh, uh, with the advocacy we've made with the government uh, since Monday, the prime minister, uh, there have been some reinforcement of uh, national security forces on the ground uh, securing our bases and installations. We've also reinforced troops from our own contingents to ensure that security is restored. We do have certain pockets of uh, still, uh, I would call, uh, 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 insecurity, particularly in South Kivu, uh, in Uvira territory in particular. UN peacekeepers have been in Democratic Republic of Congo for more than 22 years. More than 16,000 military personnel and police are protecting civilians and supporting the government's peace efforts. Most of the forces come from Pakistan, India and Bangladesh. Monosco has a budget of more than a billion dollars a year. Its mandate was extended for another year last December, but troops have struggled to contain violence from armed groups in the east. In May 2021, the Congolese government placed the north of Kivu and Ituri provinces under what it called a state of siege. Since then, the number of civilian deaths has risen sharply. Let's bring in our guests. In Brussels, jean maubert Senga, a researcher for the Democratic Republic of Congo at Amnesty International. In the eastern Congolese city of Goma, Pasi Mubalama, founder and executive director at the Action and Development Initiative for the Protection of Women and Children. She joins us on Skype. And from Tilburg in the Netherlands, Felix N. Nehinder, an independent researcher focusing on conflict, peace and justice in the Great Lakes region of Africa. A warm welcome to you all. I'd like to begin in the Netherlands with Felix N. Nehinder. Uh, after 22 years, surely this is now a failure of the UN peacekeeping mission and they just need to leave. I like always nuancing things, of course. I guess much as saying that is a failure has to do with what expectation you have about a UN force intervening in any context, and in this case, in the DRC. Uh, the UN went there as a peacekeeping mission, not a peacemaking mission. Sometimes the legalistic nuance seem, seems just to be meaningless, but in many contexts, we, we know from an, an empirical perspective, UN rarely makes peace. UN tries to keep peace between belligerents, but the idea of making peace really most of the time is left, to, let's say, to the actors and to the diplomatic, let's say, and many other channels that are used in order to make peace. Yes, there is a lot to say about Monusco, what he has done and what he has not done, uh, but the expectation that Monusco will go there in the DRC, a country of plus 100 million people and two plus million 
square kilometers and make peace even with a force of 20,000 plus uh, personnel would, was a little bit naive, I would say. Mm. That being said, of course, yes, there have been shortcomings in terms of how Monisco gets involved with different actors, both local actors, how much they are involved and how much they are activated in their own agency in making peace or in taking that road towards peace. Uh, Jean-Marie Senga, um, we make an interesting point here. Uh, the, it, the, the peacekeeping forces are about that. They're about peacekeeping, not peacemaking. But it seems to me if you've lost the support of the population, then you're actively actually encouraging violence, which is what's been happening in uh, the Eastern uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. So is the peacekeeping mission a failure in your eyes? Um, I concur with most of what um, uh, the, the other um, discussion has said. Um, I think it's a, it's a bit um, a mixed uh, result when you see uh, what the situation was uh, 22 years ago uh, when uh, the UN first intervened in DRC uh, between the belligerents to try and uh, make sure that the peace agreement was respected and where we are today. Uh, the UN has played an important role in ensuring that the Lusaka and the Sun City protocols are implemented and that the Congo is reunited. You know, uh, back in 1999, when the UN mission to Congo was created, um, Congo was split into three big parts uh, with three, um, uh, with two or three uh, big uh, rebellion, uh, rebellions and the government in Kinshasa. Uh, and the, the UN has helped uh, to, to a certain extent reunite, reunify the, the country. Um, it has also helped with the electoral and democratic processes. Uh, the elections in 20, the first democratic election is in 26, uh, were largely supported by the international community, including the UN. Uh, now, when it comes to, to peacemaking or peacekeeping, uh, what, um, it's true that uh, UN uh, it does not make peace. But actually in DRC, it was the first time the UN was trying to make peace. In 2013, uh, the UN Security Council created the Force Intervention Brigade uh, with the mandate of um, fighting and dismantling armed groups. It had mm. an offensive mandate. It was the first time in the UN history, in the UN peacekeeping history, that a UN um, uh, operation uh, was given an offensive group towards armed groups. And it succeeded in uh, defeating the M23 back in 2013. Mm. Uh, but uh, ever since it has also gone, uh, let's say, sleeping. Um, so yeah, the, the, the answer, the straight answer to your question is that it's a, it's a mixed um, result. There have been uh, successes and there are many failures. Uh, which can explain uh, the frustration ex uh, expressed by the people in the streets uh, of North Kivu recent, in recent days. But also in, uh, in recent years, uh, this is not the first time there is an uprising against the UN. Right. There have been many uprisings uh, against the UN, and this is just the last one. Well, let's bring in Pasi. Well, let's bring in Pasi Mubalama now from uh, Goma. Pasi, the same question to you. Has the UN peacekeeping mission failed? Um, I, I think actually the UN mission has failed. As um, you, you have seen, uh, that there, there is a huge tension actually uh, in North Kivu regarding the departure of the MONUSCO um, across the country, and especially in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, where there are uh, still so many people killed every day. Uh, people in the street have been claiming peace, security, and, um, you know, the, the departure of MONUSCO, uh, because they have been in the country for more than 22 years, and uh, we, we think that um, this is uh, too much time, and they should be uh, impact uh, on the ground. As you know, uh, this is like a biggest 
mission of the United Nations um, in the world. But unfortunately, what we are seeing or what we have been seeing uh, on the ground is that uh, civilians are still killed, women are still uh, raped. And we can say that the situation has been the same uh, since uh, 22 years now. And uh, for me, if um, they can't uh, do uh, their mission, uh, yeah, I, I think it's time for them to go and uh, uh, and keep the Congolese government uh, to protect uh, the Congolese citizen as that is uh, also in the duty of the Congolese government. Uh, Felix, uh, Passy has just said uh, that, and she works uh, for the protection of women and children, that women and children are being failed by this UN peacekeeping force, that it is a failure and perhaps it's time to try something else. What is that something else? Is there a something else? That, that's exactly quite a very important question, I guess, to raise here, uh, get us the, the whole discourse around the, the need for MONUSCO to leave. Uh, and my, answer, my, my, my easy answer would be probably not. The, the fact of the matter is that any UN intervention comes somehow to fill a vacuum that is existent. We don't have UN interventions in many countries in the world it's simply because, uh, let's say, authorities in those countries, including in the, in the security and rule of law sector, are able to perform the basic functions that are needed. That being said, MONUSCO has been the DRC because first and primarily of the broken nature of Congolese politics, of armed activities that are prevalent in the country. Keep in mind that this is an area which has reportedly more than 20, more than 100 different armed groups, the M23 being one of them. Uh, many reports of the, the, the UN, including independent researchers as well, have documented rampant human rights violations by the Congolese army uh, one of the recent books, for example, by Jason Stearns, but also documenting what is in many reports, has documented uh, or have documented all of those uh, research uh, outputs. Uh, the complicities of some even DRC army commanders, in, for, for example, in, in the hostilities, even in nourishing the different armed groups, because being on the front hmm. as an army commander, is a source of income. It has become a business. Yeah. Though I'm not making this, these are facts that are recorded. Right. That being said, relying on this existing structure all of a sudden after the departure of the MONUSCO to perform the basic function of protection of certain given civilians that MONUSCO has been still with protect, pro, protecting over the years with all shortcomings that can, we, can, we can go through would be a little bit naive. It's very important to think, to, to think that, uh, to, to, to look at First and foremost, that the, the, the fact that much of the failures we are documenting around MONUSCO do somehow mirror the many failures, even, even bigger failures of Congolese politics in many sense. So at the very national, local, and, 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 and even regional level, if you will. So the, the, it, it would be presumptuous to say that all of a sudden the right. Congolese apparatus will be operational and capable to 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 to, to ensure peace that it has not been. Well, let's able well, to let's do. put that Felix. Uh, yeah. Let's put that point to uh, uh, Felix. Uh, sorry, Felix. Let's put that point to Jean Mabert Senga. Jean Mabert, there is no other option, is there? There has to be a UN peacekeeping force because the the Eastern Congo isn't ready to police itself to protect itself. Of course, there are options. There have to be uh, options. Um, and these are not necessarily military options, because when we are talking about the UN peacekeeping or peacemaking mission, uh, there have been, uh, you know, um, a, a proposal by the East African community to deploy uh, um, uh, a regional force. Uh, there is on, an ongoing uh, joint operation between the Congolese and the Ugandan army. There is a uh, state of siege or state of emergency that has been in place for over one year. Um, so the response to the conflict in Eastern DRC has been largely military. And I think what has failed before it, it is the UN or the Congolese, it's the, the military approach. Uh, to the to the conflict to resolve that conflict, um, and this has led um, behind the the root causes of this conflict, which include the impunity enjoyed uh, by perpetrators uh, over um, more than twenty eight years 
uh, in, the, in this region, in DRC, but also in the neighboring countries such as Rwanda and Uganda and others who have um, uh, participated or have, have committed uh, serious crimes uh, on the DRC soil. There has been no accountability, almost no accountability for those crimes. And this has allowed them to commit them over and over again. Um, when you see what is happening with M23, that's one of the reasons. 10 years ago, they were militarily defeated, uh, but nobody was held to account. Now they are back again. They can commit again, uh, they can again rape and kill because they you know that um, for sure there will be no consequence. There have been um, Rwandese officers who have been involved in, 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 in the war in DRC. They have not been held to account. Congolese officials still now um, who have not been held to account. Other causes include economic um, and social and, um, and uh, you know, all, all the uh, issues around the management of natural resources, hmm. but also political issues, the legitimacy of power in Kinshasa. Sorry, jean we are How we are running out of time, and I do want to come to the other guest. Passy, I want to bring this to you as well. What jean Mabert seems to be saying is that actually uh, it's a failure of politics, not just of peacekeeping. Uh, but this is the best bad option, isn't it? This, the, 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 the politics aren't going to change themselves overnight. So a, a peacekeeping force is the only way to keep the peace, surely? Yeah, I, I think there is a bad politics. Uh, but on my side, I, I still think that uh, uh, the, the Congolese government have, has the um, uh, duty to protect uh, the population. But when uh, we are saying that uh, they are having the big support of the UN mission, I think um, everything should be different because, as you may know, uh, MONUSCO has um, a big logistic. They have money. They have a um, uh, lot of people, I mean, the, the soldiers. And uh, they should put all of that uh, to try to support the government to fight um, uh, different armed rebel groups we have in the region. Uh, you, you know, actually, the DRC can't uh, count more than uh, 100 um, uh, armed rebel group in the region. And uh, sometimes you, we can't even count only one uh, armed rebel which have been um, kept away by, by the UN mission. And I think uh, for the that civilian, that people uh, who uh, is in Masisi or in Uchuru, where all those are rebels are uh, actually um, responsible of so many human rights violations. What, what we want to see or what they want to see is, um, you know, they just need peace. They just um, need to be able to go uh, and work on their land and try right. to find something to eat. And if the MONUSCO and the Congolese government are not able to do that, I think there is a huge problem for us as uh, people and citizens. Uh, Felix, why is this happening now? Why are these attacks taking place today? Uh, I mean, of course, the, 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 the speakers here just mentioned some of the, the issues really ha that have been going on. Of course, it has been there is some kind of fatigue, rightly so, justified kind of anger by the population who are still very much victimized, the poor whose needs are not met uh, by, by the Congolese authorities. I can understand that this anger is directed at one of the actors that are that, that is visible and has the, the might and power that is believed to be able to solve the issue. But we keep in mind also that populism and um, hateful narratives that you have in that country are quite very dangerous and can be lethal. What we know is that this latest uh, spark of violence occurred after on, 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 on 15 July, the, 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 so this month. The, the, the head of the Senate who hails from this region, Bahati Lukwebo, from the South Kivu province, pronounced uh, uh, speeches in campaign mode in Goma and in Bukavu, where he basically said, Monusco needs to, 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 to leave. Uh, he did it in a very populist way. Who are those who want Monusco to leave? Can you raise your hands? And so on. So that kind of populism in itself, I mean, uh, academically, you can go and look for how much impactful such a speech 
is correlated with the violence that we see today, but it's difficult to not to read the two together. So there is that, but also there have been previous attacks, as, uh, as uh, Jean Mauvert, for example, say, in, in Beni, among many others. So the climate there, which is, criticizes the presence of municipal, which is seen as not doing enough. Mm. But as I said, really, I read always that as part of really the broader structural issues. Of Sorry, Felix, we are, running, we are running out of time and I do want to come to the other guests. Jean Mauvert, just very quickly. Um, do you agree with what Felix has just said, that actual some Congolese politicians are using Monasco as a bashing? They can bash them, it's popular, and that's actually leading to more anger and then more attacks. Definitely, definitely. Uh, there, there, there are... Uh, um, the UN is a victim of the uh, lack of uh, uh, leadership in, in, in DRC, but also it has its own uh, shortcomings, uh, for sure. Uh, and I think the most important now is to know what what, what needs to be done as the international community is paying uh, is seems to be paying more attention to what is going on there. Uh, uh, Secretary um, uh, State Secretary uh, Blinken is apparently uh, traveling to the region uh, next week. Uh, they, they should be now be addressing the root causes of that conflict and not just continue to invest in the military response, which has shown uh, its uh, limitations and its failures uh, over the last uh, uh, decades. There, there, there has to be accountability for those who committed crimes uh, and the other, other issues ha have to be uh, resolved through dialogue and uh, political processes. Uh, Percy, what are these root causes then? If we're, if we're to attack and to change the root causes of, of this, it's not about Monesco being in the country. It's about the root causes. But what are those root causes? I, I think on my side that... Um, Monisco being in the country is uh, may, may be good if they can realize uh, their mission. Um, of course, sometimes there are different politicians who try to manipulate youth uh, in the country, but uh, you can remember that this is not the first time that people are claiming uh, the departure of MONUSCO in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, because uh, most of the time we, we, we can see uh, people killed not far from the base uh, of the MONUSCO, and this is uh, unacceptable. Uh, so I, I think uh, it's very important that um, people can still continue to, to claim because it's a, it's a right for people if they think that uh, they are not doing their mission. Um, but I uh, really strongly condemn uh, what happened in Goma the next two uh, days, uh, where uh, people have used uh, a huge violence to, to claim the departure of MONUSCO, because I think even we want to claim uh, their, their departure, we have to do this in a non-violent way, uh, especially talking with our government uh, to make this um, happen. Uh, Felix, just very quickly, uh, very, very quickly, you've just heard what the, our last two guests have had to say. Is there anything that you think is positive about MONUSCO's involvement in Congo? Within the landscape that we painted of the armed activities, of even security apparatus, which is still commits atrocities, it's very well recorded that Monisco still keeps certain individuals alive in, in the DRC. So it's still a force that is needed. And I see always the need for departure of Monisco to be, should always be tied to fixing Congolese politics, including Cong Congolese institution, the army, the politics, but also the inclusive governance in the country. I want to thank all our guests, Jean Mabe Sanga, Pasi Mubalama, and Felix Enderhinder. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Imran Khan, and the entire team here in Doha, bye for now.